You're looking at a Gibson 2019 Les Paul Jr. Sunburst. Near mint condition. Beauty. I'm gonna do a quick setup on this guy. So just siding down the neck, I can see a bit of relief, not a ton. Sometimes you wanna flip it around, take a look from this side. Yeah, so maybe we'll measure it and just see what we're working with here. Capo on the first fret. Fret with your finger on the 17th where the neck meets the body. And then check with a feeler gauge at the 8th fret. So yeah, we do have a fair amount. It's more than 0 .010. And I like to be at least as flat as 0 .010 or less on relief. So we will turn the truss rod. So to get rid of some relief, that means to flatten out the neck, you want to tighten the truss rod. Okay, so we know this neck has a fair amount of relief. We want to tighten the truss rod. And first you loosen just, just a little bit, just to relieve any tension. Then you go back to where you were. And then tighten. That was about a quarter turn. I'll give it about one more half turn because this did need a bit. Now sight down the neck again and you can see already it's got a lot less relief. Fred on the 17th, check at the 8th. Still got more than 010. So we're going to tighten this truss rod a little bit more. If you're going to tighten a lot, you can loosen the strings a little bit. And let's give it like a full turn here. Looks pretty flat, but sometimes looks can be deceiving. Okay, we're checking at the eighth again. Okay, now we're a little less than 010. And that's where I, I like to be. I like necks fairly flat. It's 007 or 008. I mean, there's some guitars that play great at 005 or 004 just flat as all hell and they'll still play great with good action up and down the neck okay so we're at 006 great place to be for most guitars in my opinion so if you've got the neck to a point where you like the relief and check the action I like to end up around 050 to 060, the string action gauge. So what we've got here is on the high strings, less than 050, so pretty darn low. But as we go across, it gets more and more until we're at more than 060. So it's real easy to fix that difference uh, with a wraparound bridge. We're simply going to lower the action on the base side, that means tighten this screw, and just slightly uh, raise the action on that side. And we'll see if we can get them even till all the strings are about 060. Want to raise on the high strings, maybe about a half turn, let's see. Check with the action gauge, yeah, even more. And we want it to lower on the base side. So, I'm evening them out. Still a little bit of difference there. Can lower this one a little more, raise this one a little more. We're just about 060 all the way across now. You want to make sure that you tune up after adjustments like this because changing the action or string height. Is going to throw off the tuning. Got a pretty flat neck now and we've got the action about where we like it. So all it's left to see is how it plays. I start by playing on the low frets, listening for buzz. We come up to the middle of the neck. Sounding pretty good in higher frets. 
Yeah, these these newer Les Paul Juniors, they set up real nice. I've had a few of them recently, and they just set up like a breeze. And as you can hear, all the strings are ringing real clear. When you're setting um, the action and you're turning the truss rod and things like that, the ultimate goal is just to make the guitar playable, right? So you just want to be playing it and checking it all the time as you're making these adjustments and playing all over the neck. And listening for things that just don't sound good to you. Setting intonation is usually one of the easier parts of the setup. I say usually. <clears throat> just tune the strings open. Play them at the 12th. I'm just gonna check across all the strings. All the strings are sharp at the 12th fret. So that means I know that I've got to bring this entire bridge piece back. So I'll be tightening on both sides uh, where these Allen screws are. And I definitely have to loosen the strings quite a bit before I do that. Because if I try and tighten them before <clears throat> loosening the strings, it's it's got too much string tension and I won't be able to move it back. So just wanted to get a close up of this. The adjustments right here on either side of the bridge and once you've got the strings loose you should be able to turn tightening you can see hopefully is moving that yep bridge piece back you can see it moving further back when you're moving the bridge back you're in essence lengthening the strings and that is going to bring See now, the strings have already tightened up because when you move that bridge back, it produces more tension. So you may have to loosen them some more. And as we move this back, make the strings longer, that should make them flatter, register flatter at the 12th fret, which is what we're after. So let's see, there's our high E string in tune open at the 12th fret, whoa, almost perfect. Let's try the B. Sometimes you get lucky on the first try, but that's not common with these. Usually you got to keep adjusting them. If you need to adjust this anymore, it's going to be very little because these are all pretty close it seems. And this is one of the problems with the wraparound bridges, right? Because it's looking like five of the strings are perfectly intonated now. But one of them, the G string, is just slightly off. Well, what we can do is try moving the treble side back a tiny bit. And we'll see if the other strings stay in intonation and it brings that G string a little better. So now I get to loosen all the strings. And keep in mind when you do the intonation on one of these wraparounds that has just the two Allen screw adjustments, you're gonna have to do this several times where you move it back or move it forward, whatever the case is, and then have to retighten all the strings and tune again. <clears throat> 